The Sacramento Kings are doing five legendary things this season that nobody in the NBA can seem to copy. The Kings actually lead the NBA in offensive rating and they're the number one team in NBA history. But how are they doing this? The simple answer most analysis would give you is by saying, ah, they're in constant motion and they pass the ball well. Let me actually show you how and why this is such an elite offense. Now here's the first basic thing you need to understand. The offense starts with a big having the ball at the top of the three point line and the guards split evenly on both sides. The big, who is usually DeMontes Sabonis, is looking to run dribble handoffs off the top. Now these handoffs create a ton of good looks, but this is where the genius X and O's really start to happen. The Kings run a ton of these zoom sets, which is where you have a pin down screen followed by a dribble handoff. You can see here that the zoom set actually makes the defender completely off balance, allowing Keegan Murray to attack. As you're about to find out, those dribble handoffs combined with this basic zoom set set up a ton of beautiful play designs and counters that make the Sacramento Kings unstoppable. Wow, you're so dominant. The next possession for the sequence is even better. Firstly, it's important to notice that the Kings are once again running a zoom action at the top of the screen. The wing has the option to do something I like to call a 45 cut whenever his defender steps up into the gap. This time Fox was looking for that 45 cut, which it looks like he may have forgot to do, but fear not, there is no panic as this handoff action actually creates an opportunity to attack a rotating defender as Malik Monk slams it home after the sneaky fake. My absolute favorite thing to do is break down the counters. Check out how the Cavaliers are expecting that pin down screen action, which triggers a backdoor cut to counter that defensive pressure. Now this cut can also create extra help and miscommunications as Trey Lyles gets an open three pointer and can attack the hard closeout. The next time you can see that when the back cut isn't open and neither is the three pointer, Sabonis can easily attack the lane. And these guys right here are showing their appreciation. Again here you can see Sabonis' defender relaxing as he thinks he is knowing what is going on. Hey, it's a zoom set. Sabonis just attacks that that top foot with a crossover and throws it down. Because defenses have seen the same handoff action so often, it just opens up these opportunities to break a play and make a play, and also a ton of backdoor opportunities. We get a backdoor cut off of the zoom set. Now there is no sense of panic when there is no open shot. This just then triggers a ball screen off the top as Kevin Herter hits a nasty floater. So what happens when the defense is pressuring the wings? Well, you fake the dribble handoff and get that 45 cut that I talked about, which leads to wide open layups. Oh, I love counters. What happens if the 45 cut isn't open, my friends? Well, the cutter goes to the opposite side, which doesn't seem like a huge thing, but it actually is because it isolates the strong side for a pick and roll sequence, which won't have any strong side help. Once again, we see pressure on the wing. 45 cut. Then this brings Trey Lyles up for the next dribble handoff. This is also met with pressure. So guess what it triggers? Another backdoor cut. Trey sees a mismatch he can attack off of the help and he scores a nice layup. Now if both players are overplayed and the backdoor cut is still not open, this just triggers the next wave of attack. Sabonis so motions Harrison Barnes to come over from the opposite side and they run another sequence off the dribble handoff for a pass leading to a pick and roll. The rules are quite simple yet unstoppable. If you are pressured, cut, because the person with the ball at the top is usually not even dribbling, so it makes the passes so freaking easy. Teams will often try to stop these cuts by zoning up. Zones don't work either. On this play here, look at how the Kings attack open seams and gaps and pass up the open shots to get their teammates even better looks. The next thing on the Kings is they don't run an isolation game, but rather they post their players up instead. Because of their elite shooters, help defense is lacking. When help comes, Sabonis is as unselfish as they come. The Kings actually run similar actions off of a post-up 
just without dribble handoffs. This time players off the ball are in constant motion. You can see the passing IQ is off of the charts because Sabonis will throw any pass if the defender doesn't have his eyes on the ball. As you can see here, defenders when guarding a post up have a much harder time seeing their man and the ball. Backdoor cuts are easy to complete and the passes are elite as there isn't any dribbling to focus on. The Kings also have another top 5 offensive stat that nobody seems to talk about, which is their transition offense. I like on this play how De'Aaron Fox doesn't force anything. Instead, he attacks into the middle of the court, gets two defenders to crash down, creating an open shot for his team. Good teams also head man the ball and then bring it into the middle. Notice how this confuses the Golden State Warriors. Now, as usual, the Kings attack and give up good shots for gooder ones. Here, the Kings get a step. Once again, they head man the ball. Take one dribble up into the middle to engage some defenders before dropping a beautiful alley-oop dime. Mm. The next thing that nobody can duplicate is the amount of clutch gene in that Sacramento blood. Stone Cold Killer De'Aaron Fox is averaging a mind-blowing 5.2 points per game in the clutch. Just to put this in perspective, Steph Curry is the second closest at 4.4. That's a huge drop-off. The Kings also have a staggering, mind-blowing 129.3 offensive rating in clutch time. The closest thing to that is the Lakers at 116. If the game is going down to the wire, you do not want to play this team. There is one thing, however, that the Kings need to do in order to win the championship, and that is packed in this video right over here.